now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, out to California, out to San Francisco, where people sleep in the streets. It's time for Larry Bubbles Brown. Hi, Larry. Yes, we had somebody sleeping on our doorway the other night. Oh, really? Yeah. It's that bad. It's even. Yeah. <laughs> Even reach Cow Hollow. Cow Hollow is not safe. I wonder why they called it Cow Hollow. Did they have cows out there? I think they did, like 150 years ago. This is a place in one of the more expensive residential neighborhoods of San Francisco called Cow Hollow. And I often wondered about that because they used to, I used to tell people, I'm going to a big show. And they say, where is it? And I go, oh, it's the Cow Palace. Now, when I was growing up, you just see Cow Palace. That's the name of the place, right? But can you mm-hmm. imagine somebody from New York hearing you say that? I'm going to the Cow Palace. Palace. <laughs> what is the Cow Palace? And I think they used to they run rodeos, or they ran something with cows there or something. They had rodeos there. They had the... Uh 64 Republican convention. Well, I know Barry I was. Gold, I, Barry Goldwater got nominated. Uh, 64. Well, I was. Believe it or not, I was there. Was it? Was it uh, 56? Where was it held? It was held in San Francisco, and I think it was at the Cow Palace. Again? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I worked for CBS as a page boy. You know, and my little armband and the whole thing. Okay. So that was the Democratic or Republican? Uh, Republican. Republican. So that was uh, Eisenhower and, and yeah. Nixon. <laughs> that was, uh, uh, yeah, Eisenhower. Yeah, and Nixon. Um, I always, my father always hated Nixon uh, until I was about, well, the time when I became a page boy. I thought that the first to name of Nixon was that damn. You know, uh, abs- my father the exact same way just he had such a detest for Nixon it was unbelievable yeah, that damn Nixon so Mr. Uh, let's see here so I'm going to be working with that damn anyway so I'm at the convention uh, and um, I, yeah, I'm a page boy that was good I, I went and got uh, let's see I got some uh, Alka-Seltzer for um, or Tums for Walter Cronkite because he had a bad stomach from the food he ate the night before. And uh, I sat in the control room watching Don Hewitt switch the show. Uh, And I was assigned to the uh, control room in case anybody had anything they needed. Wow. So uh, I'm I'm there. I'm sitting there and uh, waiting for some kind of an assignment. Somebody says, "Uh, we need a page boy. So I said, okay, I'm your guy, because I, I don't want to keep sitting here. I'm sitting here forever. And uh, they said, uh, here, uh, this is uh, Mrs. Paley. Now, Mrs. Paley was the wife of the president of CBS. Bill Paley. Bill Paley. It says, and uh, the, Mrs. Mrs. Paley and her entourage have to be taken to their seats in the Cow Palace. Uh, here are their tickets, and uh, here's where you're supposed to go. So I take them out into the cow palace as we go up the ramp there's somebody giving a speech and what they're doing is they're placing somebody in nomination and the nomination was for vice president and as I'm walking Mrs. Paley to her seats um, everybody the guy at the podium says and I put in nomination the name of Richard Milhouse Nixon and the band plays, da 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 whatever. And all of a sudden, a bunch of people with placards that say, Nixon's our guy or whatever, are starting to march around the cow palace. And they bump into me and hand me a sign. 
and start marching me around the cow palace <laughs> as Mrs. Paley and her crew are waiting at the seats I'm supposed to lead them to. And I'm going, I'm not for Nixon. I don't want Nixon. Here, take your placard. And I kind of fought my way back to Mrs. Paley. And I'll never forget that because I, I, I was an unwitting uh, demonstrator for Nixon. <laughs> Uh, and I took her to her seat, and she thanked me very much. And, you know, I went back to the control room and sat there and said, you'll never believe what happened to me. The other thing that was memorable for me is one of my great heroes in broadcasting was Edward R. Murrow, who worked for CBS. And he was working the 56th convention. And do you remember, you remember Edward Murrow? It never had a, it wasn't day didn't go by on TV. He didn't have a cigarette in his hand. He was always smoking, right? I, I've just seen old tapes of him. I'd, yeah, I think he was, I was too little to remember him. Yeah, but if you saw tapes of him, even to this day, on person to person, always had a cigarette in his hand. And I figured that was just like a prop or something like that. They sent me down to Murrow's office. I opened the door. I swear to you. This cloud of smoke came billowing out. <laughs> and behind all that haze, okay, there was Murrow, and I handed him whatever I had to hand him. But, you know. Did he die of lung cancer? Uh, well, let me see here. Uh, Echo? Echo? What did Edward R. Murrow die from? I didn't find Edward R. Murrow's Edward's cause of death was pneumonia. Pneumonia. So, so that's, that's, no, no echo. I don't want another. He died of pneumonia. So that would probably be associated with smoking. Yeah. 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 But, uh, uh, you know, that was kind of that's one of my interesting early broadcast things, you know, being a page boy for the convention. Well, it's funny that the uh, it shows you how different to, that the Republicans would meet in San, San Francisco. <laughs> well, they they met in San Francisco and then they met again. And what do you say in sixty four? Sixty four, yeah. Sixty four. So you know they used it twice. I'm just trying to think if they. I think we were, yeah we were at the Cow Palace. That was about the only the only place you would hold a convention like that. You know, um, although conventions today are a lot <laughs> neater than they were. You know, they were really smoke-filled rooms, and, and uh, you know, you went there, and nobody had the nomination locked. And uh, unless they, of course, were like Eisenhower, and they were the nominee for the second time. Uh, and it, it worked pretty good. I mean, it, you know, it, 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 you, they went, they fought, and they maybe had something like 20 ballots, and then they got their nominee, and then the other... Party did the same thing. That's why I just don't think we should have primaries anymore. I think we should go back to that system. They didn't have primaries back then, uh, and the reason they didn't is they're not mandated by the Constitution. They were eventually uh, created by the parties who just wanted a way to pick a nominee by the people voting in various states. But you don't have to have primaries; they're not mandated. Yeah, it's just a big thing to sell TV yeah. ads. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and what happens with these primaries and everything? It's like they're running for president two years before the election. Oh, it never stops. It never stops. It's a constant cycle. Uh, you know, the day after the election, they're going, who do you think is going to be the nominee in the next one? You know, and you go, who, who, you really want to ask now? You know. Everything changes, uh, but uh, you know, and the Republicans probably will nominate Trump this time. You know why? I have no idea. They have a desire to lose. I think he's way ahead. Well, he, he way ahead in the Republicans, but yeah. way ahead of Biden, not uh, not at all. I, no. Last I heard, he was ahead of Biden, and then no. there's there may be a. Th there may be well RFK might run, which would eat into the Democratic vote, so that could actually cause some real problems. Well, no, he's Biden. only going to try and get the nomination away from Biden. That's his only. He's he said he's a nominee on the Democratic Party. Um, but there there's a third party they've created, and it's called No. Oh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. 
But this party uh, has a lot of money, and they're willing to put up a nominee, and they think that that nominee by, might be Joe Manchin. So, you know, uh, it, it, it's but it's it's insane. It's just insane. Well, that could uh, really change things a lot. Uh, the biggest third party we've had was H. Ross Perot in '92. He yeah, got he, 19 million votes. Yeah, but even before that, see, I mean, he screwed up a lot. You know, he did this whole thing where all of a sudden he announced he wasn't a candidate. Mm -hmm. And that spoiled the whole thing. So when he came back and said, I am a candidate, they went, we've already gone on past that. Goodbye. So, yes, he did get 90,000 votes, but that that that's very little compared to what he could have gotten. He could have been the real spoiler in that election. Well, I think he uh, he tipped it heavily to Clinton. Yes, yes. Yeah, it, it, it was tipped heavily to Clinton, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, I just, I, I don't think that's going to happen this time. Um, I think Biden is a problematical candidate, but I don't know if he, if, if, I don't think he's going to lose. I think he's going into this by being able to say, hey, you know, I, I curbed inflation. Uh, there are more jobs now under me. I mean, this is all true, you know. And um, uh, I think uh, I don't think he's. I think he's got the best chance. I think. I think Trump has got too much damage. Well, if the legal problems alone seem like that would stop you, but... yeah, yeah. But who who doesn't want to have a president who's in jail? Well. <laughs> Probably all of them should have been. <laughs> you know. Uh, orange is the new black. No, the president is the new orange. Uh, you know, here's what's funny. If he goes to prison and he wears one of those orange jumpsuits, what with his face, he's going to disappear. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. So what if he goes to pr- what if he goes to prison? He could st- and he wins. Well, what's interesting about that is, this is going to be fun. Let's say he goes to prison. Forget about even winning the election. Let's just say he goes to prison. He has to have Secret Service protection. Yeah. He's entitled to that for the rest of his life. So they're going to have to go to prison with him. Wow. Wow. So these guys will be in prison at least eight hours a day. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. But anyway, so, someone was saying if he actually if he went to prison and he won the election, he could actually pardon himself. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I, I don't know if you can pardon yourself for crimes. You know, otherwise everybody became president would commit all kinds of crimes. So they could, you know, protect themselves. I don't know. I I don't think that's true. But I'm not a lawyer. I'll ask. I have a guy who's a, a constitutional scholar who calls the show on Fridays. I'll ask him. Ask him. Say, yeah. Because I I've heard that you can, but I don't know what's right. I mean, certainly he can pardon people, but can he pardon himself? I don't know if that's a, he has that ability. But who knows? You know. Um, but anyway, so how is everything in San Francisco? You know, I keep hearing the most horrible things about San Francisco. Well, it's not getting any better, and I just, uh, you see all these stories like, uh, say, say San Francisco's dying, it's not going to come back. But... Well, I mean, San Francisco's dying? I mean, come on, the city will be there. It's uh, be here, but it's, there's like the uh, downtown, there's just nobody down there now, the commercial space is mostly empty yeah because everyone works from home and uh, yeah but uh, the, the the question is uh, is boy I'm having double vision right now come on clear up there we go um, the um, it, it's just that San Francisco is such a beautiful town that it is going to come back I mean all the homelessness is going to go away eventually 
that's not going to it's not going to be a city of people sleeping in the streets forever uh no so it'll come back i think if you had money it'd probably be a good time to invest now because it will come back well, it, it's definitely going to come back it's just is it going to come back in the same form that it was i'll tell you what i find the worst part about san francisco forget about the people sleeping in the streets that doesn't bother me as much as the fact that uh, uh, all those buildings they built, those high rises. I mean, San Francisco was not a city of high rises. San Francisco's beauty was dependent on the fact that all the buildings were kind of low. You couldn't build over 20 stories at one point. That was nice, and then these high rises ruined the skyline. Yeah, and one of them's tipping over. I mean, That's the Millennium Tower, yes. The Millennium Tower is tipping over. I mean, it it's just I look at the at the the you know the, the skyline and it's terrible. It looks yeah. horrible. I mean, New York City's changed a lot in that time too. We now look like the city of the future with all these pencil buildings going up, which we consider ugly, but that's the new New York. New York's yeah. always been like a, uh, it's always been Gotham, you know. It's always been uh, a massive city. So the fact that it makes those kind of changes, it doesn't makes a lot of sense. But in San Francisco, the beauty of that town was just you could you can't see the hills anymore because of those those skyscrapers. No, yeah. that old skyline with the three-story buildings and the uh, Koi Tower was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you've lost that. You've lost that beauty. Uh, but it's still a beautiful town. It's still a town that feels great, you know? I mean, come on, tell me there isn't anything better than the night when that fog rolls in, you know? And it has a real feeling as you walk down the streets. Um, it, 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 it's a beautiful, wonderful city. And I hate what's ha I literally feel upset every time I see what's happening. They've killed your town. It's t my hometown. That's where I was born. And my whole, to, to, to this day, my whole being is based upon that town. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, and it's kind of, it kind of, you know, kind of sad. It's really sad. And uh, it's your adopted town. I bet you don't like seeing what's happening there. You know? No, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's just horrible. And and I, I just think that, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be horrible. But it, but it is, and uh, I don't know. But, uh, so otherwise, uh, you, so you're going to the doctor to get your eyes to, done. Get my eyeball measured. <laughs> yeah, do you have what, a little blurry spot in the middle of your eye? Is that the reason why they're doing it? The cataract, so they have to do this before they do the cataract surgery. Yeah, well, then they do the cataract surgery. The cataract surgery is the easiest thing in the world. That's what I've heard. I, I've, like, freaked out on this four times. I've canceled four times at the last minute. So you, think, not you think that, that them cutting into your eyeball is going to hurt, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. They put some stuff on your eyeball that completely numbs it out, and they literally could stick a knife through it, and you wouldn't feel it. You know? <laughs> And uh, they do this little work. It's fun. They do it. And then all of a sudden, everything in that eye goes black because you have no whatever it is they put in there, no lens. And then they put in a new lens, and all of a sudden, it's clear. You know? Now, you had the, so when you had that, you noticed you could see much better right away? Oh, yeah, better in both eyes. And you didn't have any problems with it? No, no. Uh, well, I had had one eye done. And then about a year later, I had the other eye done. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, it's better than the lens God gave us, you know. So uh, it works pretty well. I, but although I still have a problem, you know, my problem is as time goes on, my eyesight is changing a lot. But when I first did that, my eyesight actually cleared up, you know. And uh, uh, the, but the thing that was the biggest problem was that blur in the middle of my vision that I couldn't, you couldn't get rid of, you know. Yeah. 
and uh, it, it, it but it's it's a simple operation it's uh, it used to not be it used to be they would send you home and you would have to sleep on this block that kept your head in one position all night and you had to do that for three months <laughs> i know it's strange now they just do this they put a cup on your eye you get a cup a little cup on your eye you look like a real retarded kid you know and then uh, uh, you go to the doctor the next day, and they take the cup off. They check out your eye, and they send you home. That's it. You know, the cup's there so that while you're sleeping that night, if you sleep on your face, it doesn't affect the eye or whatever, and then it's all they're good to go. And then I think about a week later they have you come back and check it out, and uh, then you're, that's it. Don't, don't come see us again unless there's a problem. Okay. So don't worry about it. who's doing it. Uh, Kaiser, that's okay. why I'm worried. Well, I can't then. I can't speak for how your vision is going to be at Kaiser, but you know. Uh, you happy with Kaiser? Kaiser, by the way, is an HMO, ladies and gentlemen. Didn't used to be. When I was a kid, and I was with it, it was like socialized medicine. They called it. Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. was, and it was too. I mean started by Henry J. Kaiser, who built the, the hospital for his employees. And then he opened it up for um, union members and their families. And that's where I went in because my father was part of the musicians' union. And we used to go there. I think we gave him $2 or something. A dollar. A dollar, yeah, something like that. And then they would do everything they had to do, you know. And as a kid, every now and then I would need some kind of, I had some kind of problem or whatever. They would take care of it. But then they turned into this horrible hospital. It just went HMO. And uh, it changed. It went the HMO, and now they're much more profit. Even though I think they say they're nonprofit, they've got like a very overpaid uh, CEO. I don't know, but like it could that. be that most hospitals are nonprofit by nature, you know. Uh, but, uh, like, I go to Mount Sinai here, which has gotten terrible over the last couple of years. So it's such a good hospital. And it's just, I don't know, it just seems so mediocre now. I mean, when I had my seat operation, they had this thing that they had to put, you know where your taint is? Mm hmm Yeah, that's, it's between your penis and your rear end. And it's called taint, because taint penis and taint rear end. <laughs> And then they, they have this little plate they put in there so the doctor can then install the seeds. Well, I went there to, I'm all dressed up, ready to go. I'm in the, the scrubs and everything. And they, they send me up to the, uh, up to the, oh uh, uh, no, the doctor come, uh, comes down and says, oh, we can't do it today. Said, Why? Well, that little thing that goes in your taint, uh, they, they don't have, they didn't get them in time. I'm going, what hospital doesn't keep these in <laughs> supply? I mean, this is something that's done every day, and they should keep a supply of them. So I had to come well, back a week later. And the, that, that was good because the week after that, they stopped doing all operations in Mount Sinai because of COVID. So uh, I was, uh, I got in just under the wire. But, oh, you're lucky. But you go, hey, you know, this is a hospital that should have this in supply. Send me up a taint please or whatever yeah, well, they call it we've become more and more third world so it's not surprising it's not surprising none of it's surprising you know but uh, uh, so uh, you, you Kaiser is your hospital of choice yeah yeah a lot of people I know go to Kaiser um, uh, is it actually uh, I've got some very good doctors there but uh, how much do they charge you a year to be part of Kaiser uh, it's part of the Medicare Advantage, so it's uh, oh. seventy dollars a month. Oh, I see the Medicare Advantage. Yeah, I don't do Medicare Advantage. I do the three hundred dollar a month plan, where they take care of everything. You know, there's not there's no copay, nothing. Really? Maybe yeah. I should do that. Huh? Maybe yeah. I should do that instead of Kaiser. Well, it depends on how much you need it. You know. But the copay at, at Kaiser, how much is well, how much is the copay at Kaiser? You start adding uh, it all up. Now it's ten. Ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, then I wouldn't worry about, it, you know. But anyway, you know, 
you're on Medicare, I'm on Medicare. What has this world become, Larry? How old are we getting? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, we were, uh, well, I wasn't supposed to live this long, you know, uh, by, by statistic. And uh, uh, you, you weren't supposed to be funny this long. So, you know, <laughs> But it's great talking to you again, Larry Bubbles. As Brown. always, and the, you should come out here. We'll do a show with Lori at the Cow Palace. Y at the Cow Palace. Yeah. yeah. Right. Moo. Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is playing at a club. Were you playing anywhere up in the Bay Area? I'll be at the Punchline next Wednesday, the next, 26th. Ne next Wednesday with who? Uh, Michael Meehan, Johnny Steele. Uh, okay. It uh, sounds like a good show. People should go over there and see you at the punchline. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yeah, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. We'll hopefully we'll see you next week or the week afterwards. But I think we'll probably do it next week too. So we'll see. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? It's uh, Friday, okay, and uh, I'm just getting a little bit older, day by day. You know. Anyway, I uh, I think it's time probably that we go over and uh, check the uh, Zoom and see if anybody uh, is uh, there. Let me uh, just, uh, let me see here. Let me just admit all. There are just two people waiting, you know. Uh, and uh, I guess, uh, well, there's Jeff Stein and there's, uh, uh, there's uh, Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. How are you? Good. How you doing? And uh, Jeffrey, of course, is uh, trying to get on here. And <laughs> yeah, we, we got your audio, so just give us your video, Jeff. I'm working on. I thought I'm on, but huh? give me a chance. See where it says a camera there? I, I got rid of something. You got a picture of a camera. See where it says stop video, start video, whatever. No, I don't know where that is. Huh? Where is that? In the very bottom of the uh, of the Zoom uh, 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 thing, huh? the Zoom app, the very bottom. Yeah, I'm on the bottom. You see what it says there? What does it say? Mute? Does it say mute? No, maybe it does. Does it say stop? Start video? Start video. Yes. Okay. There, you click on that. There you are, and there we go. We got your head. <laughs> and you can hear me. No, but yeah, there we go. Give me more of your face. More of your face. More of your face. Yeah, yeah. More, Excellent. more, more of your face. Well, okay. Slow. By the time we get Jeff on, the show's over. <laughs> you know. Today it doesn't. Want, my head doesn't want to move. We move the camera. Do you have a camera there? On top uh, of it, do you have? Yeah, the, a little camera. Yeah. Yeah. Is is it is it? What do you using a laptop? A uh, CAD. What? Mac. A Mac. You're using. Are you using a laptop? Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Oh well, then you, why don't you just take the lid and move it forward a little bit or backward a little bit, and it'll put you in the center of the picture. No, oh, well. Anyway, hello, Josh. How you doing? Uh, yeah, um, you're using a laptop, right? Yeah. Could you show them what I mean? See, that's what happens when you move the top on your laptop. See? Yeah. Yeah, I get that concept. <laughs> you get the I can't get it to move. Apparently, you haven't gotten it completely. No, I don't. Uh, no. But anyway. So it's just us, guys. At the moment. Huh? At the moment. Yeah, at the moment. And it probably will remain that way, I think. It'll be okay. Yeah, well. Uh, Kevin was coming here in a second. Patrick said he was too, actually, but. Oh, good. They're not as speedy. Yeah, it's kind of like our Saturday nights, and we can just forget yeah, everybody right. else, right? I'm just, I'm just more 
dedicated than they are. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, you know. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I gab net outrank them, so I have to show you up. You gab net outrank them. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. I never heard that one before. <laughs> Oh, now we I'm lost. Now we, now we lost your camera, Jeff. You got to go. Back I'm gonna to the, reset this thing. No, you don't have to reset anything. Just go I mean, down to the bottom. You see where it says Start Video? Yeah. Click on that. There I you, did. There you go. Oh, now I'm there. Yeah. Good enough. It's simple. No, no real problem. You know, um, but we. Actually, we give Jeff a lot of leeway, folks, uh, because he, at one point in his life, had a stroke, and uh, that causes certain coherency problems, doesn't it? Sure does. Sure does. But he, <laughs> this is a, this is a, this is proof positive that you can have a stroke and come out okay on the other side Some, of it. Well, <laughs> somehow you got to work around things. Well, yeah, I mean, like asking Alex to help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I, you know, when I make fun of you, I'm just kidding you. I understand what the what the process is, and what the problem is with it. Okay, so I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and the other I, part is uh, it's very difficult to read anything. Oh, really? Yeah. So that when so I when say, say go get this word. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, don't feel feel bad. We have a couple of senators who are not in too good shape these days. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I, I saw a picture today of Diane Feinstein. Have you seen her lately? No, yeah. but I heard about her. Her yeah, too, right? Yeah, it's gruesome. Yeah, it really I, is. I mean, yeah. one is of she her, ninety years old or something. One of her eyes is something. I don't know something wrong yeah. with it, and. Uh, I mean, she shouldn't even be in Congress right now. She, should, it's time. Enjoy the what few years you have left. You know, I'm not picking my nose, folks. I'm, I get an itch inside my nose, and then I have Thank to you. scratch it. Uh, wait, what, 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 what were you doing with those chopsticks? You were running them through your hair first, and then you were eating with them. I had a couple of ants cruising around my head. It's okay. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, uh, back to Josh uh, for a second. Uh, Josh, I mean, what do you feel about it? I mean, I, I think maybe Diane, it would be nice if she just said, yeah, you know, and, and gave Newsom the chance to appoint a senator so that she wouldn't, you know, so that it wouldn't be suddenly be a big race for the Senate and you'd have an incumbent in there once you run for the next Senate seat. Yeah, I mean, I have, you know, no problem with her, uh, you know, having that right to to serve. But, you know, a few of these folks are reaching, you know, for all they talk about, you know, Biden, for example, there are a couple, like you said, senators who are far worse off looking and acting than than he is. I mean, you know, uh, Feinstein is in pretty bad shape, it, it appears, and McConnell had his own set of issues the other day. I mean, uh, I'm not being funny. I even sent something to Patrick and Kevin saying, you know, I, 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 I think we saw him maybe having like a little mini stroke or something. I mean, he looked pretty pretty bad and then you know what what I was saying about it was and then you know he went to leave and he was walking the wrong way and they had to stop him and turn him around and I said you know if the president had done that they'd have a problem with it you know yeah but I also said but let's not make an issue of that because you know they made an issue of that with Fetterman and with other people I don't want to make an issue of it I think he was having a health problem right. so leave the guy alone for me if you don't like him and you you'd like to see him dead and buried in the ground? Okay, whatever, that's fine. But there he was, was at work, away, having a health emergency. Around, that was, you know, not good. And I think, uh, you know, Chuck Grassley. I mean, he when he, he looks, I mean, you know, he has yeah. trouble oh, yeah. stringing sentences together. I mean, it's just, you yeah. know, it, it's not as if these folks are accomplishing great things you know because nothing's getting done yeah 
So right. it's probably a good idea that a few of them decide. Excuse me. That it's it's probably time for them to, like you said, to retire. I, I mean, look. If they don't want to, they have the right to work. And if the voters reelect them and have judged their age, they have that right as well. But yeah. I would agree with you that personally, for me, I think that it's a little counterproductive for them to be serving because I don't really know how much they're serving. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, are you, uh, are, are uh, you really getting the best representation? Uh, 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 Jeff, you, did you see? Did you see what happened to Mitch McConnell the other day? Mm, I don't remember. Uh, it, it, where, no, where he suddenly yeah. phased out, didn't say a no. word. Yeah, no, I did, because I wanted to ask you if you thought that was a stroke. A lot of people think he was having a stroke, or a mini stroke, a mini stroke. Very difficult. Which, you know, yeah. and again, I, I don't know. I guess I'm breaking my own deal here because I said we shouldn't make it political. But six months ago, you know, people in that man's party were saying Fetterman shouldn't be allowed to serve because he was mentally not not all there. Yeah. But their leader, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I just think, why does any of that have to be? I guess I am not making it. Yeah, yeah, but, but you know, anyone has to make it that way. Why can't we just say, wow, that person over there, if I had passed them on the street and not known that I disagreed with them politically and I saw them having that problem, I would stop and help them. Right? Yeah. I mean, what's the difference? I mean, you know. But in Connolly's case, you'd push him into traffic. Well, yeah, you know, just, you know, yeah. You can't take away the fact that you do know who he is, I guess, right? You know, so yeah. you cannot see him. Well, you know, I look, I, uh, I, I agree with you. What you're saying, they made a big deal about Fetterman, but they made a big yeah. deal about Fetterman because it was a Democrat who won the Senate. Yeah, and they okay, lost. and they lost. So right. th that that was the problem there more than anything else. Uh, it, uh, you know, who knows if Fetterman's doing his job or not? I can't, uh, I haven't heard one way or the other. I don't know. Have you uh, heard anything about whether he's... I mean, it seems like he's getting better. Yeah. You know, he, he left there for a while to get some depression treatment after his stroke, remember? Yeah. He took a short leave of absence. Um, yeah. You know, which I can understand. Uh, absolutely can understand. Yeah. Uh, personal experience so I mean you know and he seems to be recovering well from probably well not pro I'm, I'm not him but I'm sure that that year was probably the most traumatic worst year of his entire life right? I mean you know well it, it, uh, you know again we can go to we can go to Jeff and Jeff were you depressed <laughs> after your stroke did you go through um, depression I think I was depressed a little bit but I, I was more frustrated and, and I wanted to change it. And it was very difficult because mm -hmm. I, I could hardly speak well yeah. at all. Right. And, and it actually took me a year with a lot of therapy mm -hmm. to be able to communicate pretty well. Yeah. Uh, but there was a lot of words that I couldn't remember. Did They no longer existed for a while. And, and my ability to talk actually is much better today than it was over 10 years ago right right yeah. but you know last but, last night on this show uh, uh uh phil went into a whole thing about you know about biden and how you know, yeah. how how the problems he has and so on and so forth and that bothers me because for all intents and purposes, the only thing that's wrong with Biden is he's a bit older, has a tendency to maybe trip every now and then, as you do when you get older, I know, you know, because yeah. I always have to be aware of my equilibrium now, where I didn't sure. used to have to, and, uh, and that's a very common thing. It will happen to all of you out there. And the other thing is he's always had a stutter, and as you get older, those things which you have which are Show, well, I don't want to call them problems, but uh, uh, little differences, differences, things like that. You know, the inability to, you know, speak without stuttering. His stutter is going to become far more pronounced as he gets older. You know. Yeah, but he's had a stuttering problem all his life, and he's worked yeah. through it. He and worked it's just coming back. A yeah. Well, I think he worked through it, but as I said, as you get older, <clears throat> those things like that become more right. profound. Right. Okay. He, he had the problem. He, he worked through it and, and 
conquered the problem more more or less still got it a little bit everyone that it stutters does but it's coming back a little bit more because he's getting older but the problem is <clears throat> a certain president a year ago brought all these things to light because he had to make that bring that uh, bring that to the forefront with everybody it didn't matter who it was mm -hmm. uh, anybody on the other side or whatever he yeah. didn't like yeah. he brought that he brought to the forefront all that stuff. Yeah. And he now communicated with everybody. It goes back and forth. It goes back and forth now. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter who it is. Somebody's going to bring it up about the other guy, and the other guy's going to bring it up about somebody else, and it's just going to continue to happen <laughs> until somebody just shuts it off well, and the stops doing the, it. You see, the question is <clears throat> not uh, does he fall and trip occasionally. The question isn't does he stutter, okay? Uh, the question is, is he capable of making decisions? And apparently he is because he seems to be doing a pretty good job of president. You know, certainly far question more. The question is who gives a shit as long as he does that, makes a decision and can do the job. Well, we don't live in that age now, my friend. Well, we live in a time well, we where go you go back to you that go, age and just leave yeah, it alone. Yeah, but, but you, I mean, it is a, it's, a, it's a personal preference, I guess, you know, right? I mean, but I just, it, it, it it's all this like emotional wanting my team to win type of thing because it's not exactly. really it's not really based in any sort of factual evidence or whatever because the facts would bear out that some of the best leaders this country have ever seen were physically uh, diminished you know Roosevelt yeah and I told these guys the other day that someone at my work cracked a joke saying, you know, that, well, at least Trump doesn't have to take a nap every day like Sleepy Joe. Yeah. And I can't say it because of the position that I hold there. And I wanted to say, well, you know, Winston Churchill took a nap religiously every day and was also pretty much drunk most of the other time and worked out pretty decent. Worked out okay. How, how did yeah. it go for England? Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, so throwing a nap in might not have been a bad idea. Well, you know, I mean, no. I, uh, I, I wouldn't. I, I, I listen. I know that I get tired about uh, oh, early, late afternoon, and I suddenly doze off while I'm watching television, mm -hmm. and then I'm good to go for the rest of the day. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I understand why that happens with him, but we don't know about Trump. We don't know that he doesn't nap twice a day. You know, I mean. Um, Plus, it, you know, the thing that I hate about Trump is he's now complaining about, uh, you know, that uh, uh, the uh, D Justice Department is loaded against him. You know, he's he uh, the tr uh, Biden is using the uh, the Justice Department as a weapon, and I'm yeah, saying but, to myself, I mean, wait a minute, wait, I'm saying to myself. What the hell did Trump do when he was in office? Yeah, you're right. I what mean, was Bill Barr more than weaponizing the uh, the Justice Department? Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, I mean, I know Alan said something, but I was just saying, I mean, you know, Eisenhower, multiple heart attacks. LBJ had had a heart attack before he was president. You know, I mean, Reagan obviously has his own. I mean, there are plenty. Well, outside you also, uh, also, um, uh, JFK had a horrible yeah, back. Sure, physically correct. You know. you know, so there are plenty of examples if you want to look of physically diminished capacity. You know, diminished physical capacities that had no bearing on yeah. the performance of the person. You know. Now, uh, if I, I felt that Diane Feinstein didn't have diminished capacity i'd say go for it gal you know right. i don't care if you got a few problems here and there but mm -hmm. she had a problem uh, yesterday where she had to give a vote and instead she started reading a speech yeah uh, mm -hmm. well that's that's really diminished yeah. capacity yeah, okay it's, and it's you're not you're not doing your uh, your constituents much good by doing that you know i was thinking about it and ruth bader ginsburg everybody goes how wonderful she was you know why she was terrible because she should have quit earlier so mm -hmm. that uh, so that the president in power at the time which was obama and he had asked her to resign so that he could appoint somebody in there instead of waiting for the next administration which might not be democratic which it wasn't uh but she wouldn't she wouldn't go 
Uh, and I, so for anybody that wants to say Ruth Bader Ginsburg, wonderful woman, yeah, right. You liked her because she was old, right? You know, uh, old people can get away with a lot. But she wasn't, you know, she wasn't that, uh, that, that wasn't a very smart decision on her part. And it was a good idea for Obama to ask her to, you know. Yes, Alan? Hi, I, I'm sorry I missed the show last night, but I watched it later on. And I got to tell you, I know I'm going to get shit for this from Phil. But, I, you know, he just, you know, he was talking over everybody. He wouldn't let anybody get there. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you're, you're right, Jeff. I mean, it just it it, it, it sort of ruined the, the 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 funness of the show. I'm, for me, watching it, I'm sure for the people on mm -hmm. it yesterday, Jesus. it uh, it it was difficult for me too. I mean, when I have yeah. when I have uh, somebody it, it, it driving in the car with me who's drunk and starts tugging on the steering wheel, <laughs> it's pretty hard to drive. And it's the same yeah, thing absolutely. with somebody like Phil doing what he did last night. I could walk away from the show exhausted, just yep. exhausted. I think, I think he went overboard last night. Yeah. Yeah. But why? I have no idea. By the way, I want to say hello to the Brian with a Y. Hello, Brian with a Y. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can, uh, let me let me just throw something out there. Like Biden versus Trump is like. The questionableness of Biden's diminished capacity at his age. I don't know that he has diminished capacity. Well, let me let me finish. I'm yeah. sorry. Let me yeah. finish. Yeah. Versus Trump, a total effing grifter. Yeah. I'm from New Jersey. There's, I, I I could throw a rock, and within the distance of that landing of the rock, there's like three people that got ripped off by this guy because of the Atlantic City. I'm mm -hmm. in South Jersey, yeah. and it, it, it just blows my mind that South Jersey is the most Republican that you get in the blue state of New Jersey. Right. Uh, we, we are the district of Van Drew and all that stuff. That's a little inside baseball if you follow that. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is you want to talk about Biden versus Trump, Biden wins all day long. but. The thing is, is that like there's the Kamala problem, and and Trump he doesn't have a running mate yet. It was going to be Carrie Lake, I, I guess they were, you know. Remember when she moved down to Mar-a-Lago, and now yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if that's the question. The trouble I mean, is, she went down there. They just asked her to move some boxes around. <laughs> yeah. I heard it was going to be uh, Marjorie Trash Can Green. <laughs> Yeah, like, 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 let's see his running mate. Like, listen, you know, like, because between Biden and Trump, I trust Biden a thousand percent all day long. And I'm, I'm nowadays, I'm more middle of the road than I've ever I'm, been. I'm, I'm, I'm far more positive about Kamala Harris than a lot of people are. But I think if you look back at the history of vice presidents, vice presidents always get that kind of attitude from people. Mm -hmm. You know, but not all, not all vice presidents take take. You know, have the potential to take power. I, I for me, I, I don't like her. Never did. Uh, I think she's fake. I, I and I think she has a huge. And, and you can debate that with me. That's fine. But she has a huge problem across the board with with being trusted by uh, by the general population, which is a consideration. But, but you know, like, but, but, like I'm, but, but, but I'm saying that we do that with vice presidents a lot. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody will disagree with me here, but, I mean, you look at vice presidents um, uh, just re in recent times, and the vice president is always passed off as being some kind of doofus or whatever, and their yeah. opinion is ridiculous. But if tomorrow Biden dropped dead and Kamala became president, I kind of think she might be up for the task, whether you believe it or not, because it doesn't look like it. Mm -hmm. Anybody did who disagrees with me? Go ahead. No, Take it from there. I right. agree with you 100%. You know, we, we the, the vice president is by itself a job to do nothing until the president gets it's killed. It's pretty much a job of doing PR for the president. No. Nope. Well, Cheney changed all that. I, I don't know if that's true. Well, Cheney was the babysitter for Bush. Uh, you know, 
that that was a different situation. But I, I agree with you about change. I think I think it depends on the administration. I don't think you can look at. Uh, I don't think you could go back to like you know Gore and all that and look. I I I I don't I don't know if that's true, and you know I I think people look at that, and that's the that's the only thing that he has as a negative. But that's whatever. That's fine. Yeah. It's just it's just you know Trump has the pleasure of not having anyone as his because there's a lot of Trump people out there on the right side. So it's like he. You know, he's got the pleasure of not having anyone to answer to because Biden against Trump, Biden wins all day long. I'm not worried about it. But I think there is a consideration to be made with the vice presidency. And I don't think the vice presidency yeah, but the, is what it yeah. used to be, where it was just waiting for the president to die. I don't believe that. But does he dump uh, Does he dump her now? You know, he's not going to, no, he's not going to dump her. She's yeah, a friend of Bo's. Yeah. Well, no, it isn't. It wasn't so much. It isn't so much that. I think that it would just. It, it, you just don't do that. Although Roosevelt did it, I think he had a couple of. How many? Anybody know how many different? Three different vice presidents out of four terms. Yeah. So he did it. You know. Um, He's a little Huh? Times have changed. Times have changed. You keep the vice president you got. Well, I mean. Um, yeah, no, no, I, I don't agree with that either because <laughs> Trump ain't keeping pets. Trump isn't. And he, was a, he was an actual president. He ain't keeping pets. I don't agree with that either. I, but I think, I think, in the Biden situation, I would agree with you that he, he, he ain't I, I, I think his attitude about Pence is abominable, and I'm not a big fan of Pence's, but Pence was very loyal to him. And yep. always stood in his corner in, in any situation, even when perhaps he felt a little uncomfortable doing it, mm -hmm. because he realized that was the job of a president, of a vice president, is you're partially the PR person for the president. Except that he didn't do one thing, and that's all it takes when you root Trump. Yeah. It only takes one thing, and then boom, you're, you're out of the you're, club. If you're out in his book, you're out. You know? Yeah, Pen Pence, was Pence was terrible at coups. And you know, and that's good. He, he doesn't belong. Yeah. Hello, Patrick. He's, he's con connecting. He's connecting his audio there. Hello, Patrick. Hi. Hi. Hey, Patrick. How you doing? Uh, we're talking about uh, old people in office, you know, <laughs> because you know Connolly. Does, the, 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 what happened to him was just amazing. I mean, it was just, it was just he stopped. He just stopped whatever he was saying. And it wasn't like he was thinking about what am I going to say next or anything like that. He just stopped. And he yeah, just the said. Human, on a human factor, it was scary. Yeah, yeah, I was he, expecting him to fall over. Yeah, he started to fall over, it looked like. But he, I don't think so. It can, it can and look, what's his name? Who was the, do, who was the senator next to him that told was, him that he should back off? Yeah, because the senator was a, was a doctor. He was a doctor, yeah. yeah. I believe that was Ross. And they, they took him away, and then he came back, and they said he was a little better. But Oh, he said there was nothing wrong with him, so that's, that's the way he's supposed buying. to answer. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying I'm it. Buying. Was, uh, I'm not buying it either. No. You, 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 you can't buy it. It's not. But that's a, what he's supposed to answer. So. Huh? Yeah. That's what he's supposed to answer. Yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah. So you know, um, I mean, it was. Uh, 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 but oh, getting back to last night. So you heard it, Alan, not being on it. I didn't realize you weren't yeah. there. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I unfortunately sushi ran later, and okay. I was able to get on Jack's show, but. Yeah, I watched it afterwards, and I just, I think he went overboard. I think it just, uh -huh. you know, and I, I, I you know, he, 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 you asked Kevin a question, and he would, wouldn't let Kevin talk, you know, uh, he, you asked Jeff a question, he wouldn't let Jeff talk, you know, he just stepped all over everybody, and that's not normally like Phil. Phil pushes stuff, but he will normally yeah, calm down. What was it about? Today. I thought Tony was smoking his coffee. I can't even remember what oh, the time. Oh, God, you thought? Yeah, really. Tony was really off the wall, oh, too. Yeah, wow. Tony was annoying last night, too. Oh, Jesus. 
Uh, well, well, maybe what, I, maybe what, I can... what was it about? I'm sorry, I, I did. I had. I, I uh, watched the show it. later the on. Only th- the only thing, the only thing I think basically that... they were blaming. They were they were saying that he was basically that the the the, the, the debate was that uh, they felt that uh, Hunter what? Biden was a reflection. Joe Biden was a re- it was a reflection of of Joe Biden. Hunter Biden, yeah. Hunter was Biden reflection. was a reflection. But he of was Joe responsible, Biden. basically. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. Hunter Biden, and I said no. You know, no. I mean, he was also a, he had another son, Bo, who was a ideal human being. I yep. mean, he, d- he did all the right stuff, mm-hmm. and he died. Uh, and this is the one that's left. And this was the one that was always trouble, always had a problem. But you got to realize, in that family, he was raised in a family where his his mother died, yep. his sister, and his sister. Uh, and hmm. then then Bo died. Yeah, I right. mean, come on, that's got to be pretty dis- debilitating for any human being to go through. And Phil had n- absolutely no sympathy for that. You know, now, I'm not saying that Hunter Biden, if he makes mistakes, shouldn't have to abide by those mistakes and pay for them. Okay, mm-hmm. but I am saying that have a little compassion for the nature of the of the guy and his his ongoing problems with drugs and everything else that he's had a pretty for him a pretty terrible life you know what was that he was facing up to those and he was going to go to court and everything else and yeah he didn't even he didn't even accept that yeah but i mean to to suddenly blame joe biden for bo's yeah. actions you know what kind of a father of was he well what kind of a father was uh what kind of father was Trump? Look at the horrible kids he came out with, you know? I mean, yeah. come on, I'm not, but I'm not blaming Trump for not being a good father, although I think he was probably a horrible father. Yeah. So. I'm not yeah, sure my, how old my, he was. My, 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 I'm sorry, my yeah. suggestion is, personally, I wouldn't vote for Hunter Biden at the public office. No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but then, but, you know, so that's really? the whole that's the whole freaking point it's like this is all a distraction you know you you want to pin it on him it's like oh god like well let's the, talk about nepotism well the reason I mean, there the, the, the reason the last freaking guy he yeah, had, isn't he even had, in the conversation though. yeah but the reason why he's they're going after hunter biden right now is because we the democrats went after trump and impeached him twice and they're trying to like get even with this and thinking this is a reason we can uh, we can maybe impeach uh, Biden. Listen, if you're going to impeach every president who gets into office, we're going to spend our time our entire time wasting it. Yes, Alan. My, my thought last night when I was watching the show when Phil was, uh, you know, blaming uh, the president for Hunter Biden's actions. My thought was if I was on the show, if if Hunter Biden had gone out and shot and killed somebody. Would they go and arrest Joe Biden? No, he has nothing to do with it. Right. I, I right. You know? yeah. And this, so, you know, I, that, that was really a sad line that Phil took. He didn't, you know, Hunter Biden didn't pay his taxes. No, but, and he should he, and he should be held for accountable for that criminally and, and civilly. And by the way, he's paid that back. Okay, good. he's paid. That's he's pay, he's paid it back. And now he's saying, I'm willing to plead guilty and, you know, we'll make a plea deal here. And they made a plea deal. So yeah, who gets Judge hurt? Couldn't take it because she's a, a Trump supporter or he, he put her in office or something. I mean, uh, Brian, are any of us hurt because Hunter Biden paid his taxes finally? No, no we all have to pay ours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think as long as, long as being dealt with like any of us would be dealt with. Yeah, we'd be in jail. Well, man. no, we, yeah. we might not even get caught because we're not the president's son. That's true. Okay, I mean that that's his his cross to bear is that his father's president of the United States, and any actions he does, he, he's going to be scrutinized far more than you or I would be. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we could get away with not paying our taxes. You know, because they don't have much of a enforcement division in the IRS anymore and we could probably get away with it. But hey, if you're the president's son, don't plan on it, you know? I say I say let's let's lock up Hunter Biden 
as soon as I see Jared Kushner's dick on the on the floor of the the, the Congress, mm-hmm. then I, I think I think that'll be a fair trade. <laughs> Look who we got here as well tonight. Don Giller has joined is going to join us here. Hello, Don, or or can I call you Donald? No. <laughs> Donnie. Yes. Dan Geller, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, Dan Geller. I I just wanted to point out that Gerald Ford changed his vice president. He, wait a minute, did he? When he became, when he was, uh, he he picked uh, Nelson Rockefeller at first. Yeah. And then when he ran for for election in 76, he picked uh, Bob Dole. Okay. All right, I, I trust your memory because mine's shot. You know? And Biden, will, and Biden will not change his vice president. That's yeah. all I'm saying. No. Yeah. no, you're right. He won't. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Either. But I mean, what, I, what, what's oh, your by point? the way, Roosevelt had four different vice presidents. He what, had a what? vice president, different vice president every time he got elected. Oh, really? Oh, okay. No. All right. Yeah, yeah and, and so I, I thought you brought and, that up earlier. So Trump. Somebody did. And his yeah, but your question: How many he had? Oh. Well, the last one. I know because one of them was Henry Wallace. Well, Henry Wallace wow. was. Oh, relationship? No, there's, yeah, a pro- uncle. Well, yeah. there's a problem with Henry Wallace that he had. So he was too popular. Yep. And I don't think Roosevelt really liked that too much. You know, he didn't want. In fact, he might have almost been as popular as, as, as Roosevelt at the time. Uh, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, and then I think he ran on a socialist party or something for president. Yeah, Wallace did. Yeah, yeah. he was he was very very liberal. Very. very. Kamala, Kamala is just unlikable and unrelatable. She's not going to get fired. She she's got the job. That's that's my thing. Like if Biden's going to keep Kamala. I mean. Who here would put money on the fact that he would actually well, she t- change? Well, she ticked off all the all the check marks for for the uh, uh, for, for the two thousand tens, you know, two thousand twenties. The check marks were uh, woman check, uh, yep. you know, re- liberal check, and then also the very important one, minority check. So she she made all the uh, she checked ticked uh, checked off all uh, the no, marks. No, but she was more than that. She was like. Pacific Islander, mm-hmm. woman of color. I mean, it was it was it was as identity politics as you can get. I mean, it's just it's it's all of it, you know. So I mean, I but she's I mean she's not so much of a nightmare that she's she's going to get kicked off the job. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't even think it's even worth talking about. He's not changing. Yes, did people change? Sure, uh, Trump. He's clearly going to change his vice president. You know, but I, well, I don't know who he's going to get because he, Adolf Hitler Adolf Hitler isn't available. Yeah, he's not. And that's <laughs> Trump, problem, but Trump's not running as an incumbent. He's not. He's not running as an incumbent. Um, it's, it's funny you should say that because he isn't. Not according to him. I guess he's not an yeah, incumbent, he so. is he? No. no. Trump is not an incumbent. No, you, you skipped a term. Will he will he be the only other president to run after skipping a term? Am I right? I'm uh, thinking that Roosevelt was the only other one, and he did Grover that on Cleveland. the no, Grover, Grover Cleveland. Cleveland. Oh, Grover Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland did it too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Roosevelt did it under the Bull Moose Party. But yeah. Roosevelt lost while Cleveland won. Yeah, which I think we should bring back. I think we should bring back the Bull Moose Party. Yeah. I'm all for that. You know. But. Uh, you know, um, uh, now we have this whole situation, uh, Josh, uh, where we've got our president is about to get, I think, indicted again. Yeah. Like president. Former president. Former, yeah. former president. Former president. Do you know right. we never call him President Trump? Everybody on the news calls him no. Mr. Trump. Good. Yeah. Yeah. They really don't call him President Trump. Yeah. Uh, and you're supposed to. I mean, you call Obama President Obama. Uh, when I interviewed uh, uh, um, um, Carter, uh, Obama didn't try and take I called over him Mr. Co- President. You know, what? I said Obama didn't try and overthrow the government. Mm-hmm. Grover Cleveland had two different vice presidents when he, when he ran the two times. Okay, yeah. 
But he, he, but you can do that, you know. Yeah, which is which is what Trump is going to do when when he's nominated. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think? But do you think he's going to win the nomination? Yeah, I do. That's right now at this moment. But let's say we're down the line, four months, five months, and now he not only has one, not only two, four. not in only three, but four charge you know not charges against him but uh, uh indictments, indictments against him um uh, do you think he's going to survive that with the american public do you think the american public wants to you know i think he'll survive it uh, uh by the republican party yeah. i think i think i think the media no matter what media it is they love a good cock fight yeah and i think Last time, Christie was just one of many on the stage back in 16. But this time, he's the only one swinging for Trump's face. And I think they're going to they're gonna boost Christie up. If he can get the numbers, and it looks like he is, to get on the debate stage, there's going to be a lot of time given to watch that cockfight happen for ratings. And that will do some damage. I think I, I think I don't know if Christie will get the nomination, but Christie will be kicking him in the nuts. Yeah, he's, he's a, I wouldn't let him get away from we, the I, the, I, the, I, the I, prosecutor in Christie will come out. Yes, Don. No, yeah. I'm sorry. There, there, there are too many people, and 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 I feel like I'm interrupting. No, I'm you're sorry. not. You're not. Go ahead. Um, I agree with you that that Christie will be the, the strongest anti-Trumper, but there are too many Trump lovers in that party that won't that will disregard anyone but trump i believe mm -hmm. well um, yeah, I, no i i i'm sorry i do agree with that and i don't know if that's what's going to launch i'm not saying christie will be the guy who takes it yeah. but christie will do damage um it, the it's these middle of the road guys that are the ones that decide this well, election all these we, people that are afraid of upsetting trump's base yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Again, we're not talking. At least I'm not talking about the election. I'm talking about about the the the, the nomination. Right. Yeah. yeah. The primary. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And I think. Oh. Okay. Right. I, I I think Christie will do a lot of damage, and I don't know if he'll he'll do enough damage that they'll seek either someone else. I I I, I don't necessarily see them going for Christie. So could Trump get the nomination? Sure. But Christie will do so much you know how, damage you know, with Trump. If, if Christie could do this, Trump might lose the nomination. And that is if he can make him look weak in that debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Republicans love that shit. Because they all do. he ever is in those debates is a bully. He's, he yes, never bring... they went alpha. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And, and, and so, you know, the fact of the matter is that if if uh, if Christie comes out swinging, uh, it, it would it would blunt him a great deal if he can't come back at it. Well, you the know? issue there is I don't think Trump is going to attend any of those debates, and that will hurt him. That's a mistake. You can't. You, you think he's going to let a dialogue happen without his fat face in there? Like, I, don't think he'll, I don't think he'll go to any of uh, Well, no, he might. He, I don't think so either. They say yeah, that what, here's what they're planning on doing, what he's planning on doing. Not doing the debate. At the same time the debate is on, he's going to have an interview on Twitter with Tucker Carlson. Ain't going to work. Well, that's what he's planning on doing. Yeah. I, I heard, and I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Don? I, I don't think that that he... That Trump avoiding the debates will hurt him among his base, right. and and as of now and for the last four years, he has the largest base within the Republican Party. But it's only I, I, it's I only about thirty percent, Don. Yeah, but I don't see it receding. Yeah, but but I mean, anecdotally, very strongly though, as we discussed last Saturday, like I said. I can drive nine miles to the grocery store and nine miles back tomorrow morning. And as we discussed last week, probably count for you in that little drive, mm -hmm. 30 to 40 houses that I will pass with at least one or more Trump flags, mm -hmm. signs, 
banners, etc., flying or attached to the house. That I is yet to see a single sign for any other Republican candidate yet. You know, I've seen, yeah, you, you know what, bo what bothers me is, are there that many stupid people in America? Yes. I mean, this and guy. I, and I personally, I live in a district that he won basically 87% to 13% or whatever mm. in the last election. It was basically, it's it's the largest one. I haven't met a, so in other words, you cannot do anything in this county without running into people who love, I haven't met a single person who is even remotely willing to vote for another candidate other than him. I, I, hold on, I, I, I want to address that because I've been thinking a lot about that. That that was true because when everyone was talking about Hillary's going to win, Hillary's going to win, Hillary's going to win, and I'm in New Jersey, I, w I, do, I do heating and cooling, and I do service work. I'm not an installer, so I go house to house to house. I'm on the road. And I, saw, I could count on one hand how many Hillary signs I saw, and it was Trump flags on trucks and everything. And I, w I was surprised after the fact that everyone was like, oh, everyone thought Hillary had it. I was like, they did? Because... I, I thought Trump actually had a chance because I saw those signs. The thing is, is that that's a different mindset. You don't see Biden signs out there and all that. Hillary won by the popular vote. Biden won by the popular vote. It, there's, there's a certain mindset of the Trump people that are in your face. They are the ones that have the signs that say, fuck Joe Biden. Who puts that shit on their vehicle and drives around? And so it, they're very, very loud. I'll give you that. But I, that's not a litmus test. It, it yeah, really is. We're isn't. not discussing a general election. We're discussing a primary. So I mean, that's... well, the Republic, the Republican. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess the pri I guess the question comes down to: Is the Republican Party the Trump Party like it used to be? And I don't believe. When I don't he has, believe when he has a thirty-five point advantage in the latest. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, if you want him to go to the debate, that's fine. I, he can or he can't. I don't care either way. But I'm just saying, if it's the third quarter of a game and you're up by 35 points, do you play your best player, or do you say, I think maybe my best player doesn't need to be in the game right now? And I think 35 sucks. I'm saying that's the mindset well, if, that if, if, if I were a Republican, I'd be voting for DeSantis, but that's only because as a Republican, I'd be the stupidest human being in America. <laughs> um, you know. Yes, uh, Vernon? I'd like to go back to something that we were talking about earlier, and that's uh, Mitch McConnell's health issues. Uh, I'd like to ask Josh what he feels about a law that was passed in Kentucky that says our Democratic governor, who would re appoint any replacement should Mitch McConnell step down, the Republican majority uh, legislature passed the law, uh, Andy Brashear vetoed it, and they overrode his veto that says if he appoints a senator, it has to be from the same party as the outgoing senator. Mm -hmm, that's now, interesting. I mean, well, you know, I don't. The governor know. could the governor could give him the finger, and then and then what do they do? Well, know, I mean, that's sort of back to the original setup that we had um, at the very beginning of the republic, where state legislatures did choose. Uh, the senators and you know that was obviously by amendment changed uh, because it was viewed as somewhat anti-democratic which is sort of how I would see it um, you know I would see that as a bit of a manipulation of the system rather than the will of the people because the will of the people in Kentucky was to elect Governor Bashir. you know and you know I live in a in an area and and follow some of their news closely because you know the radio station that i listen to is 700 wlw and it, it it covers a lot of kentucky's issues because you know cincinnati's on the ohio river so you know i get some of that politics i mean that to me seems you know i think it's a little out of bounds but it's going to be up to the people of kentucky to it, well, i i don't know i don't know that it is though i mean, no, I mean it, 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 you know. if if uh if you have a, a, a Let's say you have a, a Democratic senator, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he dies in a car crash. Yeah. And now the governor's got to appoint somebody. Well, yeah, if, I would if he's a, if he's a Republican, he's going to, you know, 
uh, put a, a Republican yeah, into office, I, I, and the people voted for the voted people voted Democratic. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. what what what's the answer there? You know. Yeah, and you're you're right. I mean, I think that's a little tough, but I I, I know what you're saying. I would want personally the party that the people had chosen, you know, to be honored. Um, and then give them the right to make up their minds in the next election. Yeah, and I mean, you could not, always, if you let's say you one. let's say you're a Republican senator and you got to replace a Democrat who's in office, you could always replace him with a more moderate Democrat. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you have to have the same flavor um, of Democrat. Where I guess what what I would say is I think it's a little shameful that we've gotten to the point where. We can't just trust maybe that a governor would do the right thing like we think what is the right thing and just sort of honor that, but legislatures have to get a little bit manipulative about it. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, that's sort of a reflection of, you know, one side constantly has to be gaming the other, right? I mean, uh, I, you know, a little bit uh, ridiculous. My, my, my feeling about it is that by honoring what the legislature did, we're going backwards in how we select senators, because we used to have the legislatures appoint the senators, right. and it used to be a big, uh, you know, corruption deal. And then we had the amendment to the United States Constitution that says, no, you can't do that anymore. And our state oh. legislature is now saying, oh yes, we can. Yeah, only in the event of a vacancy. No, only in the event right. of a. But that goes on for vacancies all the time. I mean, in California, uh, when uh, Kamala Harris became. Uh, uh, a, you know, a senator, uh, rather a vice president, uh, he had to appoint somebody else to the Senate, so he did. You know, and of course it was another Democrat. He didn't put in yep. a Republican, but it was another yep. Democrat. But uh, that, that goes on all the time. So I, I don't know that I disagree with the fact that it should be the same party. That yeah. it, that would make a lot, a lot more sense to me right. than, you yeah. know, I, I only disagree with it because it's the Republicans shoving things down our throats. It's the Republicans shoving what, I, what down your throat? They're shoving their ideas down our throats. They can't win it on a popular vote. Okay, yeah. they cannot. Uh, now, is, is your governor? Is your, yeah, is your governor a, a Republican? No, Democrat. he's a Democrat. A Democrat. Then. You know, and he won big. He won big, mm -hmm. and he's done very well through COVID, through floods, through hurricane. I mean, uh, tornadoes. So if tomorrow, he's done a if, really good if, job. if tomorrow uh, you you had uh, what's his name uh, quit because of health problems, the uh, governor can appoint a replacement until the next. Well, election yes, but to fill out the term. But since it's a Republican, do you think maybe he should put a Republican in, or do you? I don't. No, I don't. Has any governor filled a vacancy with a person from the opposite party? I don't think so. I don't have any recollection of any governor ever replacing a retiring or dying senator with somebody from the opposite party. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure to be honest. With how many more? How many more years does Mitch McConnell have in office, not in he's life? Re, he, he's he's up for re-election in 26. In 26. I, I don't think A is going to make it that far. I don't uh, think he'll make it to the end of the year. Well, I don't know that he's going to die. I just think that it's going to get to a point where he's going to say, or people are going to say to him, look, you know, you better Well, it was obvious retire. that he had a stroke. Well, it's not obvious he had a stroke, but it's pretty much I'd give it the money. Patrick yeah, hasn't said anything. Did you see this uh, Mitch McConnell uh performance the other day at all, Patrick? Yeah, I, I, I saw it. I didn't think much of it. He came back. He seemed pretty lucid and whatever. I mean, we're, we're dealing with a president who may mistake talking on a regular basis. <clears throat> so you know, people are talking about dementia with him, stroke with McConnell. I think, see what happened. I, I don't think anybody should be forced out. Um, I mean, if we want to redo things for age limit, like we have minimum, you know, there should be a maximum, 
maybe that discuss, but right now. <clears throat> well, who who here would who here would be for maximum on age? Well, I yeah. I don't know what maximum should be. I mean, because well, you know, one guy who's uh, who's I'm eighty three. Okay, one guy who's eighty three is like I am, and other people who are eighty three are far more lucid. Uh, right. Know. That's, that's the hard that's part. One. Yeah. That that's the point, and there are people that. What is it? Thirty-four is the minimum to become 35, president. 35. 35. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. In my estimation, there are thirty-five-year-olds that are about as mature as a twenty-year-old. Yeah. And you know, it, it it goes both ways. So I I don't know that I'm for age uh, a a ceiling on age. Mm -hmm. um, because it the individual, yeah. but you know, I mean, obviously, if, if McConnell would have had a stroke right there, um, I mean, we're dealing with Diane Feinstein. Yes, that we no own name anymore, it appears, and they're trying to shove her out, but she won't. I mean. There are all these issues that are coming up in the last four years with age that we had not seen really since Reagan, and he was only, what, 65? Well, you know, the thing is that we, we oh, he really... Was in his he was in his 70s. He 70. was 69 70. when he was elected. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean... I it, he was like 74. Nevertheless, I think that, um, uh, you know, I think that people uh, should for the sake of their party and the sake of their constituency, if they feel they are losing their abilities, just step down. I and think that's it's, the point. It's so politicians by, by nature are selfish. Right, yeah. Yeah. And that's the point. They're not gonna think about everyone else. They say they are, but once they're in office, it wins the next election. Yeah, it's just that, like the people that, you know, and we've discussed this, it's mm. just like the people that want to keep adding to the Supreme Court and adding to the Supreme Court. It's just going to be a constant wheel of who's going to get elected to make sure that whatever <clears> they <throat> want is the result. So it, 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 yeah. it, 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 it's selfishness and they're it, not going to think of the constituents. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's for it, damn sure. It happens to everybody, and they don't, you know, you don't want to stop working, number one. I mean, I'm dealing with that with a certain person in my family that she's, you know, 83 years old and still working. She comes <laughs> home and complains every freaking night. <laughs> and and you still say, well, why don't you just relax and retire? No, I want the paycheck. She keeps going back to work. Mm -hmm. Comes home and complains. And then, I, why don't you quit? Why don't you take a rest? Why don't you enjoy life? No, I want to keep working. Okay, well, what, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and I get that, but, you know, that's the thing is you got to get people to understand, you know, think about what, what they're doing and what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, if Diane Feinstein, Feinstein looks at her own video and sees what the hell is happening, maybe she would come to her senses and say, oh, look, that's pretty, pretty messed up. Yep. I was supposed to be making a vote, and I started doing a victory speech. Well, I, I, I again, you know, you know realize it. We go to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and we go back to that situation. That's and another one. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes, it, sometimes right there's a time for you to leave when you're going to be able to leave and replace <laughs> yourself with somebody of the same party who will do the same kind, have the same kind of philosophies, you know. But anyway, hey, I'm playing the theme here, which mm -hmm. means it's time to go but you, you uh, know who i'm not missing in this discussion who? Oh. huh oh. You know, who, who i'm not missing in this discussion who is phil phil okay good i think i i think i i have to kind of agree with you because <laughs> this would be not wouldn't be a good discussion like we've had tonight it's mm -hmm. been a real well, good discussion you, what if you if you saw the the canine dog that got unleashed on the truck driver yeah. that's where i live 
Okay. Have like, a fun day tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I know. My wife can't go to my wife my wife can't go to work tomorrow because her business had to close for the protests. It's yeah. Josh, thank you for wow. being with us tonight. Jeff, thank Say you. Hi to ben. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Brian. Thank you to the other Brian with a Y who left us. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, thanks very much to you, Alan, for joining us. Everybody had a nice equal little say tonight. Uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you so much. What is it? Resistance is not futile. Resistance is what? It is voltage divided by current. current. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 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 Patrick, thank you. And thank you, Don, Don Giller. Come on. Don't Call walk. anytime, Don. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there'll be another one coming together immediately right after we're through here with Jack Bishop, and he will do that on the uh, on the intersection. Uh, I will see you again. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 oh, don't forget, it's, he's on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday uh, on uh, Facebook with the uh, pop-up show, and then right back here again with you on Let's see, next Wednesday, 9, uh, 10.30 Eastern Time. And thank you so much for being with us. And if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Good night.